Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Annie Making 3 and today I'm going to be giving you what if Naruto was a secret child of Mikato and Minato. Remember to get this one to 100 likes as usual, share this to all your friends on your social media platform and also guys, don't forget to stay in tune for the rest of what is coming your way. If you're new, yes I indeed have 3 channels, 3 channels that I post what if on every single day. For you guys to enjoy. Yes, you heard that correctly. Every single day. So go ahead and check them out. Links in the description. And don't forget to comment down below and tell me if you're new. So I can welcome you personally, guys. And also don't forget to turn on the bell notification. And see exactly when I post. Because I do post a lot. So without further ado or wasting more time. What do you say we jump right into this brand new episode? Begin now, guys. So the last spot we left off, Naruto was heading towards his parents house. Making his way there, Naruto saw there was an altercation between the grandson of Hiruzen. There was also Menma's teammate there as well, that would be Sakura. As Naruto saw Sasuke looking down on them before jumping down, there was a sand team there as Naruto got involved, dispersed in the crowd. Sasuke looked at Naruto strangely. For a majority of Sasuke's life, he's always gotten strange look from Naruto as he thought that he hate him. So Sasuke always stayed his distance. Naruto saw the way he was looking at him and called out to him to follow him. Sasuke was hesitant but he still did so. As Naruto finally spoke up, saying that he did not hate him. Well that was rather surprising to Sasuke given how things look in the past. However, Naruto told him that he did not hate him. He told him that he once knew someone within the clan. Someone that he was rather close to and seeing him a lot remind him of that person but he apologized for making him feel like he hated him. Sasuke didn't know much what to say although a part of him was glad that he wasn't hated by one of the few last Uchiha's. After all the news had come out about Naruto being a Uchiha. So with that they split apart the both of them being a bit too on the Stiffer no to cause any self emotional bond with one another. Arriving towards the house, as Kushina still made comments here and there about Naruto moving back in, saying that he would have been here by now because he would have been living here. However, Naruto thought that he was right. It didn't take too long for the twins to arrive, as they told them that they were going to be going into the Chun exams until Naruto said no. That surprised and confused them. Why was he saying no it didn't make any sense? As Naruto told him that they were not ready for it. Upon releasing a wave of killer intent, the both of them got staggered. Kushina was about to protest but Minato stopped her as the both of them fell to their knees, unable to move or even do anything. As Naruto told them that they were not ready, they were just going to get themselves hurt, they were still kids. Even though their sensei told them he refused as he would end up breaking their legs and their arms to stop them from going. However, the both of them got determination in their eyes. That look, that fiery look that he was looking for. As they forced themselves back up to their feet. They refused to give up. They were going to do this. One way or another. And even if he didn't like it, they were going to do it the same way. As Naruto ended up releasing all that killer intent. As the both of them got up as he pat them on the head and told them that he was proud of them. He just wanted to see their resolve. As the both of them realized he was testing them. As they were glad that he didn't actually want to stop them from joining because even as strong as the both of them were and they were confident in their strength, they knew that they could not beat him. If he really wanted to stop them, they would have to speak to their father to interfere. So with that, it didn't take too long for the exam to begin. As new people start to flood into Kanoha, the place was filled with people all over. 
as Naruto was going to be one of the severe of the forest of death to make sure that no one interfere within the exam. However, Naruto stopped right at the exam entrance as he stood there, but his thoughts were interrupted by Kurenai though. As he went to the Jonin lounge, arriving there, Anko was there as well, teasing him as usual. As Naruto saw Neji as well, coming to watch the exam to see how Hinata would do. As Naruto sure that she would do fine, he was sure that all the third kids of this year would do fine. He had oversee and saw every one of them training himself. He did not intervene but he'd watch them and he could tell that they could handle the exam. As Naruto ended up watching to see how things would take place. That is when his eyes caught sight of Kabuto Yakuji. As he saw Kabuto giving out information, Naruto was aware of him and Naruto trusted his instincts. So, he told Neji to do him a favor and that was a spy on that participant seeing that Neji had followed them towards the forest as well. Anko told him to give them a few before he entered into the forest, so Naruto gave them half an hour as he made his way in there to make sure that no one was messing with the forest of death. Walking around, Naruto started to scan and watch the teams. He had to say the team from the sand was pretty brutal. However, Naruto knew exactly who it was. It was the unstable Jinjuliki. That is what they called him at least. As Naruto made his way around, that is when he felt a strange great killer intent that he hasn't felt in a long time. Making his way, Naruto came across none other than Orochimaru. Orochimaru had just attacked Team 7 after going after Sasuke and placing his mark on him. Despite knowing that Naruto was at Uchiha, Orochimaru knew that attacking Naruto was out of the relevance of possibility. However, he was screwed as Naruto found him. They had met in the past before an Orochimaru escaped. However, this time, as they engaged, the snake saw Nia to hold back himself because he didn't want Minato or any other Anvus intervening but he soon realized that holding back was no longer a possibility as Naruto made it so by completely dominating the fight. Orochimaru was about to die as he had to increase his speed and strength but despite pushing himself he still wasn't able to keep up without releasing his true strength but before he could do so though it was done. Naruto right eyed a special ability it was called Purify. That is exactly what he did on a guy when he was facing off against him when he first lost Hana. As is Genjutsu purify one's soul by showing them what they did over and over twisting the warp of reality in their mind. Some people end up breaking instantly and begging for forgiveness. Some truly evil people can go through it however it left their mind and days afterwards giving Naruto the possibility to kill them. However he had to lock eye contact with them for 2 seconds though. And he can only use it once a day. He had another ability in his other eye, but he did not expand on that. Aruchumar was caught in this no. Aruchumar begged, as he didn't want to die here, he made a deal with Naruto. Naruto would never make a deal with someone like him, but Aruchumar said something that caused him to pause. It was about years ago, who attacked them on their first mission. Naruto always wanted to know who did that. He always wanted to know. As Aruchumar had a seal in his heart, to prevent anyone from using him like a puppet, since his old debacle with Itachi and the Sharingan, Urchima refused to be used as he was captured so easily by Itachi. So that is why the seal activated. It would blow his heart to pieces if Naruto tried to place him under a Genjutsu. As they made a deal as Urchima gave him a name, Danzo. However, Naruto would not let him escape as he was about to kill him. However, Urchima ran as he came across the Chonins at Minato Sen. To make sure none of the other participants got involved as he was sure that Naruto could end Urchimaru but Urchimaru used one of their life to get away. However, Naruto already had information that he hasn't known about for years now. Danzo Shimura. Urchimaru was trying to cause problem within the leaf to make sure that his plan would be a success because he knew for one thing, in order for his invasion to work, well, Naruto had to die. So yeah guys, basically the last one left off, you guys can switch across the playstation of yourself, so to begin this, no guys. We begin this episode in the first of death. Kabuto Yakuji was always a cautious man. Yes, after all, being a spy, going to several different nations, you had to be cautious otherwise, well you will die. So Kabuto has learned to trust his instincts. But something was wrong today, because for the life of him he didn't know why. The reason he felt like he was being watched and yet, he was not. Kabuta search. He expanded his chakra, he tried to find anyone keeping a track on him but yet, 
There was nothing. And he felt the sensation like he was being watched. Maybe it was a whole forest, maybe it was the animals. Because he must be going crazy. However, he had a job to do. Orochimaru saw and informed him about the Uchiha and that he should ensure that he does not die. Orochimaru was confident enough that Sasuke would be able to acquire the curse mark without any problem but there was a chance that he would be too weak afterwards. His body would end up burning itself out and another team would try and kill him. That is why Kabuto was to intervene to make sure that no one kills him. Kabuto made his way as Orochimaru to prepare little tests knowing that once the curse mark was awoken Sasuke would be strong enough to handle almost any of the other teams in here however once the mark subsided after first use it would drain his body energy and keep him physically and mentally exhausted for a while that is why Kabuto was sent there and the test was going to be the three sound ninjas that were sent there as well Kabuto did not take too long to find the location after separating with his teammates he told him to head towards the tower location and he would meet them there after the test was done. Both of his teammates were indeed Kanuha Shinobi but Orochimaru promised them greatness and the both of them were easy to switch loyalty. They were nothing but run of the mill Jennings. Stronger than the average Jennings of course but still they wanted something greater. Something that they could not achieve with normal training. They wanted strength that surpassed anything in their wake. The both of them being close friends had quickly agreed to join in on Orochimaru to scam despite knowing that they will be going up against one of the strongest nations and it's not like the snake son didn't give a damn about them he only wanted to use them at the moment though Kabuto was hiding in a tree as he was glancing down towards the location looking down there Kabuto saw them team 7 meanwhile that was going on Sakura was looking towards her two teammates as the both of them were unconscious Sasuke fever was slowly going down Menma was still unconscious from what Urchimar did to his seal. Of course Sakura knew about what was inside of him. A lot of people know. The rumors were all around and there wasn't anything keeping them from discussing the fact. At first she was scared. However, knowing that he was the son of the Fortagagi, the Fortagagi was said to be the world's greatest seal master. So there was no problem there, right? But after she got to know him, she realized how nice he was. Yes, he loved the prank and caused trouble as well. And he also had a big mouth, but he was a nice person not to mention he was strong as well. Glanced over towards Sasuke, their team was a really good team. But now her two teammates were unconscious and it was her job to keep them safe. Using her medical ninjutsu, she kept on making sure that Sasuke fever did not pass certain points. She was trained by Sinadi of the sun in herself. And she would show what she was worth if any other team tried to attack them in this position. Yes, she would show them all she thought to herself in a confident tone. As she waited for her teammates to wake up, she couldn't just leave them here after all. And they sent away the sound team finally arrived towards the location. So she's in there huh said Zaku. Let us wait for a bit and see the layout of the land said Doso before. We do anything. Come on it's just one girl we saw her dragging her teammates in. There's no chance that she'll be able to stand up against all of us. I said wait he said looking towards Ken. She folded her arms and turned her head. As Dosu was the leader of this team, and he had made that clear on several occasions, so they did not question him once he got serious. As they made their way to see how they were doing, they had one job their master told them to kill, Sasuke Uchiha. They did not know why their master wanted Uchiha dead, but it was not their place to question their master at all. Meanwhile, all of that was going on. Neji Hayuga, Jolie of Kanoha, was quite skilled in espionage and also tracking as well. Is Byak gonna allow him advantage over others that most people did not? That is why for the few hours he had been watching, Kabuti Yakushi Neji got more suspicious and suspicious of this person. Neji realized rather quickly that he was not a genin. The skills that he showed, the way he carried himself, as Neji could see it, the fluctuation of his muscles, the way he applied chakra to his feet as he moved. He was nowhere near Jenny level, far above that, perhaps even at Joni level ninja. Yes, he was indeed a spy. Neji had not found anything that linked him to Urchimaru yet. As Kabuta had separated from his teammate, they barely spoke to one another. He told them they should wait at the tower and nothing else. Neji had sent a clone off to watch the two ninjas that he came in here with. Granted, they were Kanuha ninjas, but unlike Kabuta, they were not that strong. 
They were above Jenny in level but they were not that strong. Nigel was waiting and his clone to dispel to give him back the information about what is going on. However now he just had to wait as he watched Kabuta spying on Team 7. He did not know what the fascination Kabuta had with the team was but he was not good at all. This guy was definitely a spy. However it was his job to watch him not to intervene. Well unless he does something that was beyond the rules. Seeing that he was not in this exam legally. This exam was only for Jennings. So with that Neji kept himself low as he watched Kabuto. A few hours later, the traps went off outside as Sakura stepped out. As team those who came out, they were able to disarm all the traps. You call that proper working traps, huh? Said Ken with a snarl. You can know how ninjas are really useless. And here we heard that you were the greatest. What do you people want, Sakura said. Oh. Don't worry, we're not here for you, said Zaku. If we were, you'd already be dead. Hand us Sasuke Uchiha, and you might live, he said. You want Sasuke? She said to him. Yes. Now hand him over, said Dosu. And you won't have to get that pretty little face of yours hurt at all. Good deal, don't you think? As Sakura started to walk forward. Oh, what's this? Hm. And here I thought Kanoha ninjas are about loyalty, said Ken. As Sakura was walking, like she was about to leave until, she kicked up a full sprint. They were shocked as she rushed straight towards them. Move, said Dosu. It was a good thing too as her fist came down. The entire ground area that they were standing was erupted. Her fist slamming into it with tremendous force. Granted, Sakura was nowhere close to the strength of the legendary Sonin, but she was strong enough to handle these fools. Kin who was made ear was baffled by that strength. Where do you think you're going? Kin froze in mid ear as she was chopped. She violently slammed into the ground as Sakura landed behind her. Zaku held up both hands not caring of Kin's safety or not, releasing Chaka from those holes in his hand as he tore through the entire place. Kin's body slammed right into a tree as she wheezed out in her unconscious form and collapsed face first. Where the hell? Zaku looked around, not seeing the pink hair Konoichi that. Behind you! He heard those who called out. Zaku turned as he ducked. Ducking under soccer, he smirked as he brought his other hand up and slammed it right in her gut and activated his jutsu. The force was tremendous. Zaku smirked as he looked up, blood splattering on his face. She was still standing there. He was surprised. To his shot though, her eyes snapped up towards him. Shocking the living hell out of him as her fist came up. When it slammed into his face, his head was down in the ground a second later. Sakura staggered in her feet as she coughed up blood. She wiped her lip though. Pulled out two kuna as she launched him towards Dosu before. She rushed forward. Dosu knocked them away with his gauntlet. She rushed towards him but as he brought his hand up she ducked underneath it. When he waved his hand though she collapsed down to the ground. She instantly threw up. As she felt a strange effect. You're stronger than I thought, said Dosu as he stood above her. But you should know, I'm far stronger than those two. He slammed a kick right into her face, throwing her back. He then walked towards her. You put up an impressive fight, even taking out those two. However, he said, pull not a kunai. It's over. As he reached down. That was when she came up. His eyes went wide. As her fist made contact with his chin, his body was blown off the ground and launched, slamming headfirst into a tree. The tree branch cracked by the force before he collapsed down on the ground hard. Picking up herself, Sakura Haruna hands were glowing green, showing that she had used medical ninjutsu to get over the nausea of whatever he did to her. As she looked towards the gumlet on his arm, seeing the tiny holes, Back with Kabuto. Hmm, I'm impressed, he thought. So young and yet, such good grabs over medical ninjutsu. They had to put on a show, and those who did the same thing to Kabuto in there. Kabuto was easily able to recover from that using medical ninjutsu, but he didn't know that this girl was that far. He didn't know that she was a part of the legendary medic program. Taught by Tsunade Senju herself, but this girl was already adapting the super strength into her fighting technique. He was impressed. Beyond impressed. That is when it happened. 
A raw wave of pure killer intent flooded the area. As someone quickly stepped out of the tree trunk that they were in, Sakura turned, wiping the blood away from her lip. Looking up, she was shocked. Sasuke, she said. Standing there was none other than the Uchiha himself, glowing with this strange power. Yes, yes, he said to himself. A cocky smirk on his face. This was a power that he needed as black marking start to spread all over his body, up in the trees. Kabuto looked down. My master was right. Of course, he thought to himself, as he saw Sasuke gleaming with power. The pink hair couldn't reach tried to stop him, but Sasuke sent her a glare. As he seemed to be lost in his own world until, Kabuto snapped his head to the right. Now what is this, he said. Turn he saw another team arrive on the field. Down below, Sakura said Mito as she arrived. Mito, what are you doing here, Sakura said confused. We were passing by and we sent something. Mito glanced up. What's wrong with him, she said, looking towards Sasuke who was releasing a strange purple glow. We were attacked and he was bit and now something is wrong with him. Byakkan said Hinata as she activated her eyes. Kabuto quickly moved from where he was, knowing that there was a chance that Haiga could see him. It's a seal, Hinata said, the one on his neck, it's giving him power. What kind of power, Ami asked as she stepped forward, holding on to the hilt of her blade, seeing that Sasuke had a rather evil look in his eye. Sasuke, you need to calm down, said Mito, as she stepped forward raising her hands. Sasuke turned towards her. You will do, he said. I will do for what? She was cut off as he attacked her. Surprised by that, she was able to jump back though. What the hell are you doing, Ami said, stepping forward. Have you lost your mind? There was a wicked smirk that came on Sasuke's face. I'll show you all that I'm strong enough to take him on as well, Sasuke said as he attacked. As men must start to stir where he was. Meanwhile, that was going on. Neji was watching the whole thing from a distance away. As he saw the seal on Sasuke's neck, a curse mark, it made him instantly thought about Uncle. So that is why Urchimaru was here to place that seal on Sasuke just like he did with Uncle. To ruin Sasuke's life as well. He wondered where Naruto was. Meanwhile, that was going on. Naruto stood in the office in front of Minato. As Minato had his hands folded. So he got away. Yes, yeah, said Naruto. However, I doubt this will be the last we will see of him. I have a possible lead on someone working with him in the exam. Who? Kabuto Yakuji. I have Neji Hayuga spying on him at the moment to see what he's up to. There's a chance that him and his two teammates are actually working for Orochimaru. He had information on the participants of this year. The kids did not know that you and their sensei are the only ones that are supposed to have that information. So they did not make a fuss about it. However, he gave himself away by doing that. I believe that he was sent here as a possible spy, if not for Urchmar, for someone else. I'm waiting for Neji to report back to me. Minato nod his head. In these kind of situations, he could see his son as a prominent leader. However, something was wrong. Is something wrong, he said, looking towards Naruto. No, I'm fine, said Naruto. Minato did not buy, though. Are you upset that he possibly got away? That the tuning? No, said Naruto. I would not hesitate trying to save the life of my fellow comrades, even if it means Urchimar getting away. Good, said Minato. Happy to hear that. I want you to work on this possible spy lead and give me updates, he said. Naruto nodded as Minato dismissed him. Once he was gone, Minato turned in his chair. He did not expect Urchimar to be this brave, to actually enter the village like this. He thought with him escaping from this village once with his life, that he would stay away far away. However, he was wrong. But he made a big mistake returning because Minato was going to make sure that he erased this threat that was plaguing Kanoha for the longest time now. However, as Naruto stepped outside the office, he might seem calm but in the inside, it was like a hot, boiling volcano about to explode. It was restless, about to go up in smokes and flames. His eyes show a burning seed in hatred. Of course Naruto knew Danzo, he knew him quite well. He knew that he was a despicable man. Despite saying that he do things for Kanoha, 
he only did things for himself. If he was not the one leading the village, well, he would do whatever it takes to make sure that turning his favor even hurting the village in the process. A person that claimed to be loyal would not end up hurting your own home to be in charge. And on Naruto's list, he was nothing but an enemy. In the past, he had tried to speak to him about where the village was going. It was soon after Naruto had lost Hana and his sensei. That is when he had approached him. However, Naruto's mindset had already been focused on making sure that his siblings were safe. Granted, he was thinking about going to change the world by himself, but in order to do something like that, he would have to leave everything and everyone that he loved here. And he could not put them through that pain. He could not make people suffer because of him. So he dismissed that thought. So when Donzo brought in that offer, he quickly erased any indication that he would ever side with the man. And Donzo did not bother him since. But if this was true, there could be a chance that Urchimaru was lying to him. Because Urchimar knew that he would not let him escape, it was just a trick to buy him some time, which he did and it worked perfectly. However, if it was not, there was a chance that Donzo did all of this in order to get his father's seat. An emotional man was far easier to corrupt, and everyone knew that. However, unlike normal dignitaries, unlike normal politician, which Naruto was not, Naruto did not wait for anything to happen without making a move. That is why. Donzo heard a knock on his door. As he was in his house in the upper district of Kanoha, being a shinobi before God knows how long, and not to mention once being a part of the counts that Minato had disbanded after they tried to get ahead of themselves, Donzo was well taken care of in the money department. Yes, he had a nice house. Granted, he no longer had any of his root division organizations under Kanoha because Minato would make sure to expel all of that from what happened in the past. When Donzo hobbled and opened the door, the last thing he expected was to see this person in front of him. Ah, Naruto-san, he said, trying to put on a calm, friendly demeanor, not knowing what the child was doing here. Because Donzo was not expecting this. Donzo was a man that was always prepared, always ready for what is come, but this was not something that he was prepared for. How can I help you? There's something I need to talk to you about, said Naruto. Do you mind if I come in? Donzo was suspicious. He could not get to this child. Donzo could not get to certain people that he wanted. Itachi was one of them. Granted, what happened in the past caused Itachi to massacre the clan, but unlike Itachi, Naruto was different. His mindset was far different from Itachi. He was a person that take actions immediately. Itachi had hesitated and thought about the long option of eradicating the clan. After all, it was his people, his own family. However, Danzo had saw it for himself. This child in front of him was different. If it means protecting the ones that he loved, he would end anyone in a matter of seconds. That is why Danzo did not believe if it was him. In Itachi's situation, he would not kill the Uchiha clan. He would do something else. Yes, Danzo knew that. He would try to find another way, and that way might lead to more bloodshed, but he would. And that is things that Danzo would not stand for because when he wanted something, he got what he wanted. However, just to find out what is going on exactly, he allowed Naruto to step inside. Upon stepping inside, Danzo made tea. As he came back and placed the tray down, handing Naruto a poor cup, the blonde did not take a single sip. As he just looked at Danzo, now said Danzo, how can I help you, he said. As Naruto was quiet for a few moments, there was no words that came from his lips. He just looked towards the man. Danzo felt his right eye twitching as he looked at the blonde in front of him. The gaze that the blonde was giving him was not one that Danzo liked, not in the slightest, something was wrong. He noticed Naruto's eyes went down towards his bandaged arm. For a moment there, Danzo was getting worried until Naruto glanced back up. Recently, Orochimaru the Sanin entered the Chunin exams. He what? Danzo said. This was something that he did not know. So yes, once again, this child was able to shock him. Yes. I'm not sure exactly what he came for. 
seeing that Naruto did not see the interaction between him and Team 7. Well, it's definitely something that I'm sure that we're all not looking forward to. Said Danzo, as he clenched his one good arm. Were you able to stop him? We fought, said Naruto. However, he got away. As Danzo cursed the side, he's a stain on this village record. And I wish he would have been expunged by now. Just a mistake of the past. However, I do believe he will strike again. A snake never strike once, Danzo said. Yes, you're right. However, he did tell me something before he left though. Oh, and what was that, Danzo asked. In order to get his freedom, he tried to make a deal with me. Saying that he knew what happened. All those years ago when my team was first attacked. Danzo started to feel uneasy. Quickly enough, he started to slowly send Chalker to his right eye, where the Sharingan was. And what did he tell you, said Danzo? He told me that you were the one that was involved, said Naruto. That you caused it. Me? I assure you, said Danzo, he was lying to you. Yeah, probably you're right, said Naruto. He's a liar and a traitor after all, and I would not put it above him. To try to cause conflict in the village by giving me wrong information, said Naruto. Yes, said Danzo. So tell me, what else did he say to you, Danzo said. Well, said Naruto, he... Naruto stopped himself. What was this? Why was his mind fighting against him? Something was wrong. Unknown to Naruto, his body started to react differently. He sent you an Uchiha DNA, causing the Jutsu to stop. What was that, said Danzo, waiting for the blonde to respond. What are you doing to me, said Naruto. Danzo got up rather quickly. What are you talking about, he said, trying to play innocent. Danzo was cursing in his mind how. Why wasn't his technique working? As Naruto shook his head. No. He glanced up, his Mangita Sharingan activating. For a moment there, Danzo saw something strange. Like his eyes almost turned purple, but it disappeared. Naruto instantly saw it as he saw the green glow. Both of them flashed away in an instant as Naruto reappeared towards the opposite side of the room. Danzo reappeared clutching his eye while his eye hole. Naruto looked down in his hand as he had a fully developed Mangita Sharingan in his hand. Glancing towards Danzo, what have you done he said as he turned towards the man. Donzo stepped back in shock. How? How didn't it work? He thought, not understanding. This eye. It belonged to Shisui Uchiha. Naruto was six years old when he had met Shisui. As he had met him through Mikato one day when they were in the Uchiha district. Naruto by then was able to differentiate between different chakra signatures. And this eye, it gave off the same chakra residue. A bit watered down, but it was the same. Not to mention it was a fully developed Mangetio. It wasn't long after that he found out that Shisui had committed suicide. Naruto was never given specifics on why. But now, immediately Danzo took off, running towards the back of his house. However, he was not fast enough as Naruto appeared in front of him. The one-armed ninja lashed out his one free hand at the moment. However, Naruto pulled back, dodging the attack. That is when his eyes picked up on the seal on Danzo's arm. Something was locked in place. This weird sensation that rattled his entire body. It felt like Naruto flashed through hand signs as Danzo jumped, ready to burst right through the window until his foot was snagged by a root that ripped out of the earth right through his living room. Danzo was thrown violently as he slammed into the wall. He tried to get up and cut the thing off as he reached for the knife on the table. However, Naruto slammed his foot right into his face. The force that he made with the ground caused his head to spin, slice. Danzo cried out as Naruto took off his entire arm. The sling included. Picking up the thing, Naruto's eyes roamed over the device, the golden bracers, that was keeping something in check. Keeping something locked away. He turned towards the man that was trying to get up. I'm gonna ask you once again. 
What have you done, Ruta Yell? Donzo coughed up blood, trying to think of a way to get out of this situation, but at the moment he could find none. Fine, don't talk, said Naruto. I'll take it. As Donzo tried to close his one remaining eye until he realized he could no longer open it. Since this battle began, he had looked in Naruto's eyes, and that was one of the biggest mistakes you can do when facing off against a Uchiha and not to mention the state that he was in. Time skip. Minato was surprised as he was called. Yes. His son had sent for him. The Anvil Captain Yujiro was the one that had came his way. As Minato was confused by that, arriving towards the Deathland field, a training ground that was rarely used, Minato arrived to see his son standing there. As he arrived to see Naruto, nothing out of the ordinary. Naruto, he said. What are you doing here? What's going on? He asks, knowing that his son would just come to his office. That is when Minato felt strange. Looking down, Minato saw the seal on the ground. As Naruto gave him a nod to pursue, Minato stepped forward as he stepped through. It was like there was a blocking mirror there, allowing the outside to be completely visible but not see all that contained inside. Because Minato's eyes widened when he saw, None other than Donzo Shimiro on the ground, unconscious. His shoulder bandaged up. Naruto, what have you done? He said. I thought I would bandage him up so he wouldn't bleed out and die. Minato snapped his gaze up as Naruto's eyes met with his. However, Naruto's sharing gun was activated. Minato found himself in an empty world. As Naruto materialized, what are you doing? What's going on? Watch, said Naruto. The place around them shift as the both of them arrive. Both Minato and Donzo were talking to one another. They were discussing about the Uchiha's. Donzo telling Minato that they were a threat, that he had to get rid of them. They had to. However, certain things did not make sense in this conversation. The hatred that Fukaku would have for Minato, as Donzo was telling him that Fukaku would end him and take the position for himself, that the Uchiha's will revolt against the village. Naruto turned towards his father. I remember Fukaku. Not well, but I do remember him, said Naruto. He was a calm man. He really speak. However, he pride himself on strength and stability. And he also loved this village. Back then, I never noticed a scrutiny, but as I grew, I realized that he kept in a lot of anger because all the scrutiny his clan was getting. Naruto, you must let me finish, said Naruto. So I don't understand why he would come to hate you so much. Is it because of the position? Yet I doubt it because I've been by his house many times before. The few times that we did talk to one another. All he wanted was for his son Itachi to rise through the ranks and prove that the Uchiha's are capable or better than many or most. To become the next clan head or maybe even Hokage. That way they will have more power. Granted he never outright said that, but the way he spoke, I now start to understand that that was a deal. So tell me, why did Fukaku hate you so much? Minato seemed to hesitate, as Naruto spoke for him. I started to think, was it because of who my mother is? Did he find out about it? Is that the reason why he hated you? Minato lowered his head. He released a sigh. He did not fully know, said Minato. However, we met on several occasions and we were once spotted. It was nothing going on between us after all. That one night was the only time. However, it was about you and how she was coming along. Fugaku thought that there was something happening there. Mikato told me that. He brought it up in a conversation, but she would quickly shut it down. But Fukaku was not one to let things go. And that brought up resentment. And hatred. And things escalated beyond that point. To a point that not even I could stop. The place around them switched once again because of Naruto. As Naruto saw, Itachi this time, as he was speaking to both Donzo and Minato and the two other elders, they were all there. Speaking about the 
Uchias and their next course of action. However, as Naruto looked towards the man, you spoke to Itachi about this. So you knew, said Naruto, that meant it wasn't a coincidence why he just did this and fled the village. May not to remain quiet, but Danza went behind your back. He spoke to Itachi once again, making him realize that if it wasn't him, it would be much worse. But Itachi loved Sasuke too much to allow him to die as well, so he made the ultimate sacrifice. You found out. You stripped everything away from Danzo. You disbanded the council immediately. Because while the others weren't too happy with it, they weren't against it either. Am I right, said Naruto. Minato know that Naruto already know all of this after seeing through Danzo's head. So he did not verbally respond. Naruto turned his back on the man before glancing down towards the ground. He had several root agents remaining. He used them to make contacts outside of the village. Contacts with Urchimar as well. Where they staged an ambush with another group. Several ninjas. There was many barriers in his mind. Preventing me from getting the information so... I went at it hard, said Naruto. I'm not sure if he's brain dead or not. But I don't really care, said Naruto. I was able to get what I want. He made contact with these ninjas through with root ninjas. Making contact with Urchimar as well. And they all planned. Setting up the attack on me. They wanted me to die. They know how much you care about me so they wanted you to get weakened. And after that, Danza would come at you and try to get the position. Did you know that he took Shisui's eye? No, said Minato. We had a plan on stopping Fukaku by using Shisui ability. The Kodama Tsukami, which he can use to persuade his opponents. Yes, he tried it on me. He, he what? Naruto turned towards Minato. As he showed in the scene. How, how did you break out? I do not know, said Naruto. However, my eyes activated on his own. It seemed to have cancelled the effect. So this man on the roof was the one that caused all of this, said Naruto. The world returned back to normal as Minato was on his feet, looking up toward his son. I, I didn't know, said Minato. I know you did not, said Naruto. After all, that is something you could not have kept away from me. I told you before. What I would do to the people that were involved. This man set out a hit on my head. Involving several other people. There's a name. Kenjin Kairu. He was a proxy that root agents use. To get in contact with the other forces that Danzo. Decided not to show himself in. I'm not sure exactly who. They go to but. There are transactions of payments. That he use. But the exact idea about these people he did not get for himself because he didn't want to get involved. So if things went bad, his name would not come up in anything at all. So we still have no idea who was truly behind the attack, said Minato. No, said Naruto. But with this name, I will find who it is. And I'll make my promise a reality. As he start to walk, wait, said Minato. About this whole thing. Just deal with it, said Naruto. Cut him off. We'll talk about this some other time. I doubt that he will recover anytime soon, said Naruto. As he looked down towards Danzo. Before he flashed away. Minato walked over as he looked down towards the man. Danzo was foaming from the mouth. Minato reached and opened his one eye. It was rolled back. Minato could tell that he was alive, but was he truly alive? Naruto had made a promise a long time ago to make anyone that was involved to suffer. And he did do that for Danzo. Naruto did not just enter his mind. He wrecked it. He ripped it apart. Danzo was left in a state of nothing but agonizing, deadly pain. As Minato looked towards the seal scroll that was beside him, which Naruto had seen the eye and arm inside. Minato quickly took the body and flashed away. Time skip. The second phase of Chunin exam finally came to an end. As everyone was gathered. They were all gathered in a tower as Hayate, the proctor of this part of the exam was currently explaining everything. 
Minato had just spoken to all of them about. What was the true meaning behind the Chunin exams? As a few participants that were down there were listening to everything, Hayate even asked them if any of them would like to go. As Kabuto raised a hand saying that his injuries had not fully yet healed, he was gave the go ahead to go along. So with that he made his way. As for Team 7, Minato applied a suppression seal on Sasuke's seal after Sasuke had begged him to allow him to stay in the exams. Minma and Mito had made short work of Sasuke and knocked him out rather easily. And he had no memory of what happened. In the 5 days that it took, Minato had brought Kushina here and she had looked over the seal. However, this seal was far more powerful than the one that he placed on Uncle. The one that he placed on Uncle was a testing phase, but this one was a perfected one. It would be a lot harder to remove. But in order to do that, she had to study it. But that was after the exam. So right now everyone was gathered. Kabuta though decided to leave as he was making his way out. Kabuta bumped into someone. He turned and looked towards the person as he saw that it was just a random chonin. Oh, my apologies, the chonin said. Oh, don't worry about it, said Kabuto. As he made his way off, Kabuta paused as he stepped. As he glanced around, he didn't know why but he felt like something strange had happened. Confused, but there was nothing around him. He shrugged as he kept on walking. As for the kids in the preliminaries, the fights didn't last too long. Ami had lost against Tamari, and Tamari had made it through. Conquer had made it through as well. Gara made it through as well. Mito, Minma, Sasuke, Hinata had made it through as well. Sakura had made it through as well. Kiba had lost. Shino made it through. The finals were set as they were given one month to train and get better. Gara had shown how bloodthirsty he was. As he had went on to kill Kabuto's teammate, no hesitation, he just ripped him apart, being the only one to actually kill someone here. However, that was over with now. They had one month to train. Later that night though, Orochimaru had once again returned back to the village despite his recent encounter with his almost death. However, this time it was to get information. Kabuto had met him in a secret location and owned the boat of them knew about. As Kabuto had met up with him as they spoke, he had told Kabuto and Kabuto had gave him back almost every information. Orochimaru was plotting to take over Kanoha with the sound in the sand. He had tried to make movements towards the other villages, however, they did not buy onto anything. The sand was kind of desperate. You see, the wind daimyo was taking the missions and giving them to the fire daimyo because of the successful rates. That was leaving the sand actually kind of barren. But instead of going to speak to the man personally and trying to form some kind of situation and solution, Raza decided to take up Urchimaru and his offer. The sand was always hailed as one of the weakest nations. To get a foothold into the game and get stronger Raza was going to play a big move because Urchimaru offer was so enticing. Leading the man to believe that the village of the hidden leaf would actually fall at his hands. As despite the strength that Leaf has shown in the past, Raza actually believed that they can actually do it and take down one of the strongest nations. Yes, he believed that quite well. That is why he was thinking to go with Urchimaru planning. It seems like plans were already being formulated between them. However, there was problems. Raza was second guessing himself. As he thought about the strength of the Hidden Leaf, Urchimaru didn't like that so he made a drastic move. As of now, Raza the Kazakage was dead. And well, he showed up. But of course it was not really Raza. Given the sign information about everything. Telling them about the attack. The sign was indeed shocked about this new development. As their Kazakage was giving them one month to prepare. All of them fell for the attack that is to come. However, they had no choice but to listen after all. He was their leader. So they could not really make a move against him. But, most of them were not liking this, especially the right hand man of the Kazakage Baki. He was not liking this in the slightest. Orochimaru told Kabuto to remain in Kanoha and gather information especially on one Naruto, Namikaze. That child would prove to be a big problem in the future, in his future attack. 
he has already shown that he had incredible amount of power granted. Orochimar did not go all out in the battle. Fearing the prospect of Minato actually showing up but in that fear he almost died. The next time they met, if that was the next time, if his little plan did not work, Orochimaru will fight him with all that he got. However, Orochimaru, despite how powerful he was fear, the progress of that battle, as he remembers his last encounter with Itachi, Sharingan users were always a big hassle to deal with. That is why he had to go after Sasuke, one that was underdeveloped and not strong enough to go against him. As he believed that the Sasuke thing was coming along nicely, However, Urchimar knew about Kushin and her Dan lineage, and about Minato as well being a seal master. Granted, he doubt they will take off his seal that easily, but he need to make sure that Sasuke come to him quickly. That is why he had to make sure that Kanoha fall. Nothing can stop him from making a hidden leaf fall, that is why. He is bringing some of his top members here, such as Gurin and Kimimaru as well. The leaf need to be destroyed. Once everything was said and done, Kabuta made his way. Yet... Kabuta's eyes returned to a glassy state once Urchimaru was gone. It seems like his mind was blank as he just walked. He walked and walked and walked and walked and walked until he arrived at Training Ground 3. Arriving to the location, Kabuto just stood there in absolute darkness, not moving, not saying anything, or doing practically nothing. That is when someone materialized behind him. Kabuto turned instantly. When his eyes made contact with the person Kabuto, mind seemed to snap into focus as his eyes show off a faint view of the Sharingan. Flashback to earlier. The reason why Kabuto felt strange was because once he looked into that tuning eyes, what he saw was a normal pair of eyes but he did not know that he was looking into a fully developed Mangetio. And looking back at Naruto who was in disguise because of his eyes, changed in the whole pigment of Kabuto reality around him. The Sharingan was truly a magnificent tool, placing a suggestion Genjutsu over him, strengthening it with the contact that they made. Kabuto time fluctuation was messed up, seeing that he thought he had bumped into the tune and just said sorry for a few seconds when he was standing there for the past 5 minutes, having his mind invaded and his thoughts being controlled. That is why Kabuto spilled every little secret, everything. Time skip. Minato and Naruto both stood there, along with Baki as well as Kabuto told him everything. Baki glanced towards Naruto. Well, this is quite the find, he said. He looked towards Naruto. Now we have a problem though. The Sand don't know that they are being tricked by Orochimaru. And having this war would be nothing but a waste of manpower and bloodshed. We need to speak to Baki. He's a sensei of the Sand group that is here, said Naruto. They aren't due to leave until tomorrow. As Naruto glanced toward his father, yes. We will do that to let him understand what is going on. For now, Ibiki, keep this one here. Find out everything he knows about Urchimaru's location and who exactly is under his staff, said Minato. And also, said Naruto as he looked towards him. His mind is easily suggestible right now because of my Genjutsu. I want you to find out all information on the Kunoichis that work for Urchimaru. Konoichis, Ibiki said. Yes, said Naruto, not giving an explanation to why. Time skip. The Jonin sends you off. The Sand team was supposed to have a meeting with Kabuto tonight. However, he could not find the Spectacle Man anywhere. Unaware that Kabuto was working for the same man that was now in charge of his entire village. He decided to call it in. Not wasting any more time as this man was clearly trying to take him and his old village for a fool by not showing up. That was when he was shocked, startled. The person that he came face to face with was not one that he wanted to see in a million years. The Hokage stood there, baffled, he wanted to run. However, his mind realized that even if he tried to, could he really escape as he turned, however, behind him was a person that was said to be feared throughout the nations already, known as Uchiha Reaper. Baki calmed himself instantaneously. Hokage Dano, he said. How can I help you? Minato sped towards the man, without hesitating as he grabbed him and flashed away, as Naruto vanished as well. Baki found himself in a room, looking around. He was about to get upset, 
said Minato. The tone that he used showed that he was not joking around. But he had no choice but to sit down. What is going on, he said. What is the meaning of this? Your plan to invade Konoha, said Naruto. Baki froze up. Tried to keep himself calm, but it was hard to do in the face of these two great foes. I don't know what you're all talking about. Don't play this, said Minato. We're trying to actually help you. We found out about your plan, and you should know what is really going on. I'm afraid, Hokage Dano, but I don't know what you... Enough, said Naruto. We know what you're planning with Urchimaru. Tell me something. You're the right-hand man of the Kazakage, correct? Baki nod his head. What does that have to do with anything? Doesn't your Kazakage seem different to you? Baki had the suspicions, but this was further... Concluding them, what do you mean? Orochimaru killed your Kazakage and is now in charge. And he's trying to make a move to use your village as nothing but cannon father to bring his advances forward and bring the leaf down. However, it will fail. Baki was suspicious, but he couldn't just say anything like that because probably it was not real. I'm afraid this is something I'm not aware of, said Baki. The Kazakage has issued no such order. As Naruto tilted his head, looking towards the man, Minato opened his mouth, but Naruto spoke first. You know what war is, said Naruto. You're probably old enough to have seen the Third Great Shinobi War. I myself, I have not, said Naruto. But, I assure you, if you and your village move against Kanoha, someone else will have to raise your future generation, said Naruto. The tone that he used, it was the one that would make any man shiver in fear. And it did work. As Baki looked towards those eyes that had spring to life, he quickly looked away. Listen to me, said Minato. I'm trying to save you and your village right now. You're being used and tricked. So do the right thing and listen to me. Because if you don't, this will not end well for you or your village. Aruchamar is just going to use you, said Minato. And then cast you aside once everything that he gets is done. Your village and you is being tricked by this man. He's made his motives known by attacking the hidden leaf. Your Kazakage, despite everything Raza, know that attacking the leaf is a bad idea. I was able to gather some more information from our accomplice that we have here. I did not know about your village situation regarding the missions. Baki said nothing as he lowered his head but instead of coming to me, Raza was pursued by Urchimaru. But even he hesitated knowing what will happen if he goes against us. So, I'm going to ask you one more time, said Minato. Do you not know what is going on? And do not lie to me. Baki looked up towards the man. Minato was a very scary individual, however. What Naruto just said to him that someone else will be raised in their future generation. He understand those words very clearly. And look in his eyes. This person was one to kill and not hesitate in the slightest. We... we didn't know, said Baki. We didn't know that this was going on. I... me not to raise a hand. I know you did not, he said. Uruchimaru is proven to be a slippery, conniving bastard. However, for now let him believe that everything is going his way. What do you mean, said Baki, confused. I have a plan, said Minato. Time skip. Naruto finally went home after this long, exhausted day. Arriving home, Naruto noticed that someone was already there. As Naruto stepped inside, it was none other than Uncle. He gave her a key, of course, seeing that she had spent a lot of time here when she was usually drunk or hangover. And she annoyed him into giving her a key. For what reasons? Naruto did not know why she wanted to come here. Well, they were friends, but still, it's not like Neji had one of his keys. As Naruto looked towards her, she was sitting there waiting for him, drinking some sick. The moment she saw him, she sprung to her feet. Where were you, she said. Naruto raised an eyebrow. Why are you here, he said. I heard what happened. Did you find him before I did? Is he dead, she asked. No. Damn it. How did he get away? Especially from you, Uncle said. 
uncle had went on missions with Naruto and she knew what he was capable of to a degree. And she doubted that Urchumar could have fought Naruto in a forest of all places. While Urchumar was a son in and strong, Naruto was incredibly powerful. He was a Uchiha and also a Senju. He was slowly becoming one of the strongest men in his entire village. A twist between Hoshirama and Madara, everyone says that. Uncle thought that you'd at least capture him. He used the life of a tuning against me, said Naruto. Damn it, Uncle said. She knew how Naruto was about people that he thought of as comrades and, well, a part of the village. It doesn't matter who they were, as long as they were a part of this village and loyal, Naruto would risk his life over and over for them. That was just the kind of person he was. Sometimes it seems like he might not have any emotions, but that was so far from the case it was ridiculous. He wants the people here to prosper and live on and be happy. In fact, he kind of cared a bit too much that was the whole thing. But it was hard to see it on the front view because of how he carried himself. Damn it, said Uncle as he punched the table. I wanted to get that bastard. And do what, said Naruto. He would have killed you. Especially when he found out that he no longer had that seal on you. What? Do you really think that he would have taken me down that easily, she said. He's strong, said Naruto. He's been one of the few strongest persons I've fought in a few years now. So don't get ahead of yourself. Tuh, you're the one being cocky, she said. Did you use everything that you have at your disposal on him? Naruto did not answer. Tuh, Uncle said looking to the side. I'm just pissed off, okay? I headed into the forest, and I searched and searched. And when I finally arrived, and spoke to the Hokage, I was told that you handle it. And where were you for the preliminaries, she said. I was there for a while, but I had other business to take care of. Damn it, Uncle says she sat down. I just really wish I could have been there, to at least gut the bastard. You might have your chance sooner than you think, said Naruto. She raised eyebrow. What are you talking about? As Naruto sat down and poured himself a cup of sake. Listen, you're not supposed to know this yet. However, I need your discretion. Of course, she said. You know me. I love to talk a lot, but I won't give away anything I should not. Alright, said Naruto as he took a sip. Listen up. But guys, be in subscribe right here. If you want to make sports and do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell if you want to stay posted. Remember, share to all of your friends and social media platform. And also, guys, don't forget to go ahead and check out the other what ifs and other channels. And yeah, without further ado, I'm off and I'll see you guys soon. Peace.